Okay. Good enough. We're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play uh, the Stanley Parable. Yes, yes, yes. This is a mod of Half Life. Because I don't know. I hate Source. I don't even know why I thought this was a good idea. Anyway, we're gonna play fucking video games, okay? Chapter 1, The Stanley Parable. Yes. Are you viewers ready for the unlimited gaming experiments? Yes, experiments. Not experience. Experience is for f fucking schmucks and, and scrubs. We're, we're doing experiments. Anyway, I'm gonna fucking start. Okay. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Oh, it's about a guy Stanley named Stanley. Stanley for a company at a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh, okay. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Oh. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This oh. is what employee 427 did every day of every month. Exciting life, yes. Considered it so ready, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Uh huh. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. Oh. Yeah, he, he wouldn't forget it, kids. For nearly an hour. When he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow, no one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. And we must Shocked, solve it! Frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk walked out into the hallway. Oh. Okay. Uh. Sure. Why not? It, it, yeah, sorry, I, I wanted to reset that. It was lagging me. It, it still is. F, never mind. Okay. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself uh -huh. and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Sounds like a fucking pussy, just saying. You dare beep at me? 426. Fuck you! No, no! We're not done here. Okay. Uh. Green floors and. Boring. Always. Okay. Yes. Oh, that door beeps at me too. Uh, so does this one. Okay. Okay. Um. No one's there. Faggot left his post. What a fuck. Uh, you're, you're gonna get fired, bro. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Uh, this was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You don't say. Right. No, that's fine. That's fine. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere, and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. Yes, yes, so this, when he came this sounds good. elevator, and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Oh, okay. So I'm going to push the button to go down, because I'm being a dickhead. Yes. Oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know... You really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Then why are you talking to me? You're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps...
perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone? Give me a chance and just let me tell the story I want to tell. Hmm? This guy's an asshole, you know that? He's an asshole. He's an asshole. Okay, we're going down a hallway. There's a hallway. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally not listening to you fucking asshole. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Hmm. Well, that one looks very red. I think that one is the red door. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Well, Walmart told me that that color is red. Yeah, see? See? It's correct. I knew it. I got this, guys. I got this. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, well... Walmart said that if I can't go through the other door that was completely the actually red door, that I have to go through that one. Okay. You're an asshole, by the way. That That's cool. It's, it's whatever. Oh. We're gonna go into, uh... Uh, a black hole. That's cool. Yes, this is video games. I'm dead. Good. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to show you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. The Stanley Parable. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Uh -huh. His job pushing buttons demanded a muddle of him, so there was not much of himself to give. And in this way, Stanley's job felt less and less like his every day. But if buttons need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next, and then the next. So without question or judgment, Stanley continued to do what the screen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, Flowed into waking up, God, flowed this... into going to work, and here he was again. Someone shoot me! Stanley was Someone shoot me now! Sentence, <laughs> absolutely nothing at all. Someone. But in reality, no one ever actually disappeared from the office, and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision to choose which path he wanted to take. Would his life still have any meaning? Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough. These hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person, and living that adventure. Fuck tax returns! They to suck! Your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison. But these delusions... Fuck the guys! They, they don't know shit about anything! The difference. And so, Stanley asked, if that door they never... Fuck opened, work! If I'll never be I'm gonna to play video games! From people ...and from these buttons... Is this life still worth experience? I'm fucking questioning everything. Stanley, what are you talking yeah. about? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Then he pushed Fuck a button. Fuck you. And then he pushed a button. Then you he die. pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Oh. I won. Cool. Okay. Well, we're... we're we're gonna do this again, except this time I'll li to listen to the dickhead. To Actually, I'm gonna skip this part. He never okay, here's me listening to this dickhead who's gonna call me a faggot. I know it. I just know it. He's gonna call me a faggot. What is this? This is stupid. Ep it dares beep at me. 508. Okay, this is fun. Beeping. That's cool. Beeping right in my fucking face. That's cool. No, that's cool. This is fine. Stanley entered the lounge. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. You know, I take a look at this place, and I see why everyone left. This place is a shithole. It's a huge shithole. What does this even mean? Who put this here? Who, who put this here? This is shit. Who did this is shit? You're a fucking faggot, and I want you to know that. Who put these here? What do they even do? They don't even have wheels. What 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 are they what what is their purpose? This is stupid. 
Uh, and look at all these shelves. They don't even have anything on them. Who's running this place? No, no wonder everyone left. There's probably not even a boss. He probably killed himself. Look. Yeah, see, look. Another room. Everyone left. Yeah, that's cool. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. <sighs> Fuck it, fine. We'll listen to the dickhead. Yep, see, I knew it. He killed himself. He must be dead. Entering his manager's office, Stancy was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before, and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know, the number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Oh, no, he's right. I, I would not know that it was whatever you just said at all. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random mm -hmm. buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. And yeah, then, yeah, that was luck. Stanley ventured forth into yeah. the newly opened passage. This guy isn't co a complete dick. He's just a dick sometimes. I hope I don't break my neck. Okay. We're going. And we're going. And we're going. This is boring. This is... drew deeper into the bowels of the building. Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. Yeah. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. What the fuck? Am I in a fucking missile silo? They're gonna nuke America, the fucking terrorist bastards! I knew it. An enormous control panel was suddenly discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking. Eating. Doing work. Or watching TV. Every input on this device should ruin my game experience. <laughs> 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 began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. Huh. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. What's this still? <laughs> I don't know 
to want to click all of these. Nah, I'm not gonna click all of these. Okay, we're gonna do this this time. Bing, bang. Let's see if this does anything, kids. Divas and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every no, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, uh, I'll skip to this bullshit. Actually, hmm. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Okay, we're gonna go to the top of the thing, and we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We are going to make this happen. With oh man, you hear that? Even the narrator believes that we're gonna make this happen. This will be truly a sight to see. Fuck this. Yeah, that's right. Decisions. Did I win? I'm dead. seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he found was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. Oh, man. And he stepped out into the world. He is a manly he man. a cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. He has achieved video games. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna win. We're gonna win for all of the people and the entire world, and no one shall know of this story. It will be a tale of amazingness and tragedy and and green. Yes. Oh, Stan, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After it kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Yes. Control? Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go, turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Now, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead, play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom. 
an escape. I didn't have to do that. I've run this story many times, and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever, and then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to Beat handle the clock. responsibility. Beat the clock! Gotta do it! You know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Now I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. What? You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is, this video. is a video game. <laughs> Except for one thing, there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. You're a faggot. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then, he lets go. He surrenders. And he dies. Your face, faggot! Thirty seconds, Stanley. Thirty seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you die. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your story. Nope. I, I fuck you. Exactly. You don't know how to video games. Perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this Well, timer. yeah, you're a faggot. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever after. Okay, guys, you remember this? Well, we're gonna press the up button and kill myself. Yes, I will be dead. I will be dead. I, there will be no return for me. This is the end. As soon as the elevator gets to the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the end. I surely will not return. I will be dead. And I'll have to load a new save and metal things. Penis pods. Okay. Let's go. And the dramatic revelation of a, a smashy thingy. This metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. But he thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. Yep, this is the end. I wanted you all to know that I wasn't actually Farewell, dead. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous... Now we have a vagina talking. In a single visceral instant. Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Yep. I'm dead. There's me. Dead. Cool. Now we're gonna go down here? It's a shame then, but for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? Probably. Yeah, yeah, probably has a tiny penis. Are those floating? They look like they're fucking floating. Oh, everything's still beeping at me. Every possible 
choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. Aha! That's a wall. That's the exit to Blotchy Land. And? There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. Ow. Oh. So? But listen to me. This story is not over. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. And Don't let time... Dead. Workout? He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue is almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. Am I gay? For example, why couldn't he see his feet? Oh, down. thank you for that. Why did doors close automatically behind you? Oh, him yes. He went? Yes. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Oh, my God. Where am I, he thought. Yes. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling, until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No! Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists uh -oh. and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! Oh my god. And then everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person, it was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be, and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career, and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body. 